welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan. We're coming to you from T Hub, one of the hottest incubators in the country. And it is our privilege to have with us on the show Don Chambers. Don, always a pleasure to have you on CNBC TV 18. And thank you very much for agreeing to mentor some of our young Turks here. These are companies that have come in from every part of India, from across different sectors, from education to SaaS to IoT to agriculture. And it is really our privilege to have you mentor them today. But John, let me start by talking to you about, uh, you know, the fact that you're so bullish on India. And I've been having this conversation with you for several years now. Yes, and, and this momentum that you believe that India is riding on, you've always had the confidence that this will continue. So now you're putting your money where your mouth is. You were doing that even while Cisco was on. But now you're actually putting your personal wealth into India. You're backing Indian startups. You've made your first investment. What are you going to be looking for? So when you really look at uh, future and making investments, I compete on market transitions, not versus a competitor. I believe India is in the biggest market transition of any country in the world. I believe hugely in your Prime Minister. I would literally do almost anything for Prime Minister Modi. I think he's in the top three in the world, and I've met every leader in the world many, many times. And his program of Digital India, I think, will literally get the country growing not at 6 or 7% growth per year, but 10 plus. And when I said that three years ago, and you, you worded it well, I'm the biggest bull in India, yeah. and I'm doubling down again with my personal time and energy, which is more important. The finances are nice, but as I was teasing about with Amesh earlier, uh, that's not the key ingredient here. The key ingredient is do we create a startup India with scale mm. that goes across all 29 of the states that literally helps the per capita income double every six to seven years, that as 1.2 million people come into the workforce, we create that opportunity. I think almost all job creation will come through startups and gender equality. So while I'm out here, I believe in your leadership. I think your best position in the world. I think everyone has viewed India as traditionally a slow starter. Now you're an innovator that people say, are you going too fast? My only recommendation to the Prime Minister, go even faster. So I'm here because of you all, and this is the chance to teach, which I love doing. And this is what I'm going to do for the next at least one to two decades of my life, mm -hmm. is to help startups become you know, really big on so a larger scale. So what do you scale. look for when you analyze whether you should back a startup or not? Perfect. So the first thing I look for, and each of you want to think about how would your company apply, because this is what any investor is going to look for. First, I'm looking, are you in a market transition? If you're entering a market, the transition can be the way customers buy, it can be new technology such as artificial intelligence or mobility or social media that does it, or drones, IoT. Uh, is there a transition going on? Secondly, are you positioned to where you have a chance to lead that transition and are you within one to two years of it occurring in front of you? I then look very specifically at you, the CEO. Uh, I invest on market transition and then the CEO. Does she or he really have the skills to lead an organization and grow rapidly? Does she or he really want to be coached? Do you know what you know and know what you don't? And that might sound basic, but most CEOs get into trouble with thinking they know an area and they can therefore do the next area very well. I look to see who your Lighthouse customers are, and I usually talk to the customers. I then see who's backing you, what are the VCs involved, the angel investors in terms of the approach, and then your leadership team. What I'm proposing is a replica innovation process on how I make selections, but also how each one of you ought to think about how you position your company. Mm -hmm. So let's get started with the questions now, and I know we have plenty here. Uh, I, I will start with a woman because uh, Don Chambers is betting on the transformative power of women. You've got a microphone right there. Go ahead. A little bit about your company and what you're doing and, and then your question. Hi, so I'm, uh, I'm Komal Talwar. Uh, Excelpad is my second startup. I ran a services, IP services company for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that the market is transiting to a lot of uh, IP productification of services. Um, so Excelpad is the world's largest and the most intelligent patent and technology search and analytics tool today. Okay. Um, and we've essentially moved to disrupting the market by product productifying a lot of the IP services by applying AI, machine learning, natural language processing and blockchain technology over all the world's patents. Uh, so my question really would be around where do you think in all the technologies in the future, where do you see the maximum IP generation and innovation happening? Okay, gotcha. So just one of the lessons learned. Her elevator pitch, how was it? Really good. Her summary of her company, the direction, 
a subtle advertisement, but also educated us all on it. She got out what was her differentiation. Yes. She hit artificial intelligence and natural language processing and cloud, all That's the right really a compliment coming from you. Uh, <laughs> and what I would do is if I was doing an interview, I'd dig down deeper to see does, is the, the background that goes with it. But in terms of what is really hot, uh, the hottest thing going on is digitization. As that occurs, and think of it as the Internet of Things, where there will be 500 billion devices connected to the Internet in literally less than 10 years. Uh, that's going to provide a huge amount of data. So big data connected with digitization. Part of it will be in the cloud, part of it will be done in intelligence at the edge. Artificial intelligence uh, and tremendous productivity gains are not only the buzzwords, that's a given on where it goes. Uh, security across the entire group is a given. Social media playing a key role into this is another given. So if I were looking at the hottest areas, I'd look at IoT, I would look at how you combine artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, natural language processing. I'd get what changes the customer experience and how you differentiate within a market. I'd look at social media in terms of an aspect of that. I would look at how all these will change every industry, from literally how businesses interface to their consumer to how you grow the next generation of protein, which will be probably crickets. Uh, in terms of the next generation of protein for the world, not just in developing countries, but at the very top end restaurants. So those are the type of things I look for. Then I look for the team that hits the elbow. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, thank you. Excellent. We've got a question there at the back, several of them in fact. I'll type, hand the microphone across to you. Go ahead. And I always tease whenever I'm in an audience like this, when somebody at the back gets one of the first questions, if I wasn't wired, I'd walk back to the back of the room with them. <laughs> Because often that's where your tough questions will come. And by, when you walk back in the back of the room, I look in your eyes. It's hard for you to ask as tough a question. And I'll block your exit if you're going to slide out. <laughs> but what did, what did I immediately do? You build rapport. Yes. You make it fun. You tease a little bit. You let each of us know it's human. And we're here to hit whatever question you would like to have. John, this is Raj. And I'm the founder and CEO of Hug Innovations. Yes. We, uh, like Apple, introduced Touch in 2007. Hug introduced touchless interaction in 2015. Uh -huh. We use the most common wearable sensors out available, and we can detect relative motion in the virtual space without a camera. That's our USP. But wearables is a very crowded market, mm. and there's a lot of discouragement on going on that path. So what we did is, am I audible? Am yes, I audible? OK. So what we did is, we are actually building a developer platform on the IoT space for the human to machine interaction where instead of me saying that, okay, you control a music player, drone, like that, I'm opening these gestures as a common developer platform and letting developers build the ecosystem. Okay. Do you think I'm on the right track or what do you think the future of such technology will be? Because there are no references. Whenever I go to the investor pitches, unfortunately, there's no proven traction or there's no proven market. And people think I'm too bold, thinking too big, and it's a big boy's game. So I want your <laughs> advice. Should I really think that big or should I slow down? I think that's, that's a thought for a lot of startups. I mean, are you thinking too big? Are you thinking ahead of the curve, too ahead of the curve? Well, how, what would your response be? So the, the answer is if you want to be a successful startup, you ought to dream big. You want to think ahead of the curve because if you're trying to go into an existing market with no differentiation, the big players will crush you. Uh, however, you should not have fear of the big players. In my market, I never worried about the big players. I could out-execute them. I worried about a startup that would get a market transition or a change in consumer buying behavior. There is only one Steve Jobs, and the reason I'm saying that is he's the only inventor I've ever seen that understood a market, could articulate the market before it developed. The best way for each of us in this room, mere mortals, and I'm very proud to be really good at this, I listen to customers. And so I try to go out when I get an idea and bounce it off of customers. And that's what I do when I make an investment. And then I develop a group of customers that I trust and know their expertise on. Back to your basic premise. Uh, I would have said voice and touch five to 10 years ago with things of the past. I mean, Cisco made voice for free. We announced it 15 years ago. We delivered on it. I thought it was a platform of the past. Same thing with touch. It's going to be virtual, social media, uh, et cetera. And this is why it's so important to always listen. The customers started down one path, and then they came all the way back around. They want things that are simplistic. They want you and your company to make your interfaces easy to use in a format they're used to. So voice is the easiest format to do. Touch is the easiest format to do. 
Now, if I could stand here and give you advice based upon a one-minute elevator pitch, which, which was very good, by the way, uh, I would be overly arrogant. Uh, I'd have to understand your market a little bit more. Sometimes you might ask me a question on a market that I know cold and I could, I could take a cut at the answer. This one I'd have to understand a little bit more. But I like the concept of touch. I like the concept of being bold. I would say find a customer or two that would develop this with you without draining your resources dry, because large companies can do that to you. But will really help you develop the product. And maybe even if it goes well, let them invest in your company, which really gets them even more committed. But my initial reaction? I, I like touch.